the opportunity to continue our teaching on freedom in the fight. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks, praise, and glory for the privilege of worship through the study of the Word. We acknowledge your presence, and we give you glory, we give you praise. We ask that you anoint your people with eyes to see, anoint your servant with your word as we empty ourselves vessels for your use and yield to your Holy Spirit now in Jesus name we pray we bind you Satan all territorial spirits all principalities powers rulers wicked spirits in high places the strong men on assignment to or through any of us here all spirits above or on and below we command you to absolute silence we bind you and break your powers we are loose you are cast out, and the saints said in agreement, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, we have been talking over the past several weeks about freedom in the fire. How God sets us free from the afflictions of life. And we used as our proof text several weeks ago, uh, Daniel, the book of Daniel, in the narrative in chapter 3 of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. And as you know, they were thrown into the fiery furnace by King Nebuchadnezzar, but no harm came to them. And when the king looked in the furnace, he said, Did we not throw three? And I'm paraphrasing. And his henchman said, Yes. And he says, Well, I see four. And one is like unto the Son of God. In other words, it was in the fire that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego encountered Jesus. Fire represents affliction. It's in affliction that God will come to your presence. He won't send an angel. He'll come himself by his spirit to your presence. Huh? Okay? Now, he came in response to what? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's faith. Right? So it was their faith that caused God to act on their behalf. Now, we've said that in our Christian faith walk, the fiery furnace represents the afflictions that we have to go through in our earthly faith walk. And we said that there are three that we have to contend with, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Now, we have already talked about the flesh, and we're going to put that aside. And we've said that the remedy for the flesh was that it has to be crucified. And the word crucify actually means to subdue or extinguish. Huh? Just as when, when someone in ancient times was crucified on the cross, their life was extinguished. That is, their earthly life was extinguished. Huh? Okay? So, the word crucify to the flesh means that we have to extinguish or die out or subdue the desires or the lusts. The word lust means desire. The desires of the flesh which are not ours to have. Huh? Okay? Okay? And now we're going to put that aside because there are two other afflictions that we have to talk about, and that is the world and the devil. Okay, now notice that one of the afflictions of our fiery furnace comes from inside. That's the flesh. Okay? Two come from outside. The world and the devil. Okay? But they are all fiery afflictions. Okay? Now... The world can be a scary place, huh? But that doesn't mean that it, uh, it necessarily will beat you if you know how to make the right moves, see? Okay? If you know what to do and the Holy Spirit will show you what to do, you will get the victory over the world, huh? Okay? And you'll get the victory over the world 100% of the time if you do it God's way. But if you have a setback, remember that a setback is a setup for a comeback, huh? Okay? 
a setback is a setup for a comeback. And if you will take that attitude and you will be positive, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me, then you will be able to get the victory over the afflictions that are come upon you by the world. Huh? So we want to look a little bit at, uh, at this today so that we can understand the importance of attitude in setting our will. The same attitude in setting of our will that we had to uh, use against the flesh, we have to use against the world. Huh? Okay? And if uh, you understand that, you will be able to get the victory. Now, in Psalm 23, we read uh, that although we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, it says. I will fear no evil. Huh? Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What is the valley of the shadow of death? The valley of the shadow of death is the world in the world system. Huh? Okay? Now, you must understand that. Now, it is not the valley of death. It is the valley of the shadow of death. Okay? Now, why is that important? That's important because a shadow might scare you, but a shadow can't hurt you. See? Right? Okay? So it's the valley of the shadow of death. In other words, there is something here that is not nice that we walk in the shadow of, okay? And it is the spirit of death. <coughs> so the world has upon it the spirit of death. But guess what? In the original Greek of the New Testament, when the scripture is talking about the world of the flesh and the devil, the world itself is not God's enemy or our enemy. The actual Greek word there means the system. See? The system by which the world operates. See? Now, God, God is not against the world. It says, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in Him shall have eternal life. And the word believe means trust. So you receive eternal life by trust. Say, as a free gift, something you cannot earn, something you cannot deserve. You simply repent of your sin and say, Lord, I receive your, etern your, give your free gift of eternal life and you're saved. And you're saved forever. Say, as long as you keep receiving grace and walking by grace. Huh? Okay? Why? Because grace demands a response. That's why. Okay? Now, if you understand that, that it's the system, okay, that God created the world, the world belongs to him. It's his property. Okay? He doesn't hate his property. Okay? He hates the system by which the property is run. Why? Because God never gave the world to Satan. Okay? The world was given to Adam and Eve. And God's command in Genesis 1 to Adam and Eve was, Go forth and take possession of all the earth and all that there is therein. Say, that was the Edenic covenant that God gave to Adam and Eve. All right, and then what happened? Satan deceived them, got them into sin, they fell out of grace with God, and Satan took over the earth. He. Uh, commandeered it. So Jesus says he is the prince of this world. Now, Jesus did not appoint him the prince of this world. Satan appointed himself. He got cast out of heaven. He fell to the earth. And when he got here, he says, well, as long as I'm here, I might as well be prince. <laughs> and he took over. Not that God appointed him. Okay? In other words, he stole the title deed of the earth from Adam and Eve. Say, and he wants to hold on to it. God has a different opinion. Okay? But that's the way it is, and that's the condition. So Jesus says, 
all the world is under the power of Satan. Not because Jesus appointed him, but because Satan took possession of it. See? It's a spiritual war, folks. Okay? And you say, well, I'm not sure I believe that the devil exists. Well, Jesus has a different opinion because he talked about him all the time and he knows he exists. Hmm? And Jesus must know because the scripture tells us Jesus was creator. Huh? He was creator. Okay? Now, we are on this earth. We are in the world which Satan considers his turf. He considers this his property, although he is deceived. But his position is, if you are a born-again Christian and you are on this earth, okay, you are here in rebellion to me. That's Satan's position. Say, have you ever wondered why Christians have such hard lives? That's the reason. Say, because you're being opposed by the enemy because his position is you're on his property walking in rebellion to him. So he turns things around. Okay? Actually, the scriptures, we're going to see this morning, the scripture says that you and I are heirs of the world. See? We are the heirs of the earth. It belongs to us, not him. You see? But as long as he thinks differently, we're going to have to contend with him, aren't we? So we need to learn how to contend with these worldly afflictions that come on us from outside of us because of the fact that all of the world is under the power of Satan, but we are the heirs. How about that? See? So we've got to do something about it in line with God's word in order to take uh, uh, possession of what is rightfully ours. Huh? Y'all see that? Huh? So... Here's the principles uh, by which the world operates. And I want to show you, if I may, uh, a couple of uh, transparencies, okay, on how the world operates. Because you're in it and you need to know, right? Uh, can someone shut that light for a moment? Thank you. Okay. And here's a principle that they teach in the Baptist church. See, some truths can come out of the Baptist church. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> okay. Now, every good Baptist learns this, and it's really true. i got to tell you, it's really true. Okay. And it says, Behold this truth before your eyes, that all of this world is lies and lies. Huh? Say, Behold this truth before your eyes, that all of this world is lies and lies. In other words, the world system operates through the lie. The world system operates through deception. Now, why do we know that that's true? Because all of the world is under the power of Satan, and Jesus called Satan the father of lies. Huh? The father of lies. Therefore, this world system that we are to reject operates through lies. See? It operates through lies. Now, there's another way of saying that. There's a fellow named Bob D'Elia who uh, <clears throat> really knows what he's talking about. And uh, here's what he said about the world. Never trust the human eye in sunlight or in shade. The puppet show of sight and sound is the devil's masquerade. Okay, get the idea? The world is a show that the devil is putting on. Okay? Never trust the human eye in sunlight or in shade. The puppet show of sight and sound is the devil's masquerade. Okay? That comes from the Book of Burn, chapter 2, verse 19. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, the lights place will go on. We'll go back. Huh? Repeat what? In sunlight or in shade, the puppet show of sight and sound is the devil's masquerade. <laughs> okay? But, you know, these, these two little uh, statements really hold truths in them. Okay? Because of the fact that there are two spirits operating in the world, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And error will always lead you into lies. You remember the and, and misunderstandings. You remember the transparency that we showed uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago. Okay, so we must understand what the problems are, and then we must understand how we are to respond to these problems to get the victory. See, God wants you to get the victory. Okay. So the first thing is we must understand the condition of the world. Okay? We just looked at the operation of the world, and we said that it is controlled by the father of lies, and it operates through lies and deception. Okay? So the system operates through lies and deception because the system itself is a lie. Say. And we must understand that. And as long as we understand that, then we can learn how to operate contrary to it. And if we will do just the opposite of what the world wants us to do, okay, and do just the opposite in line with God's will and God's word, okay, we will get the victory. Why? Because God performs the word. He says, I am watching over my word to perform it. Huh? So we need to know God's Word. If we don't know God's Word, we've got to start getting into the Bible and learn God's Word because God performs the Word. If we get in line with God's Word, our life will get a lot easier, won't it? See? God never fights those who are going His way. Do I have to say that again? Okay. So let's look at the condition. Okay. Here's the problem. Revelations 12, 9. Turn with me, if you will, to Revelations 12, 9. And read along with me. We're going to look at the condition of the world. You need to know what you're surrounded by. And you need to recognize what you're in, immersed in, so that you can respond to it. You can't respond to that which you have no recognition of. Huh? <coughs> right? So you need to understand how the world operates so that you can... Uh, respond to it because if you don't respond to it the world will run you over say these are afflictions and we must know how to walk in the furnace and we must know who to walk with in the furnace huh okay you can't be in the furnace and walking with the world okay you're gonna get burned if you walk with the world in the furnace you're gonna get burned Okay, that's the spirit of error. But there's a spirit of truth in the world. Okay, and if you will walk with the spirit of truth, you will not only not get burned, you will get the victory. Amen? And so, here's the problem, the condition of the world. In Revelations 12, 9 we read, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay? Now notice that when uh, Satan was cast out of heaven, he fell to the earth. He didn't go to hell. He fell to the earth, the scripture says. And a third of the angels fell with him to the earth. They are on the earth. Huh? Okay? And notice here it doesn't talk about the demons. See? It says that Satan and the angels fell to the earth. It doesn't say the demons were cast to the earth. The demons are not angels, as many people teach. Okay? Why? Because angels have angelic bodies. Okay? And demons do not have angelic bodies. Demons are disembodied souls, okay, of the pre-Adamic civilization, 
the civilization that was on the earth before Adam and Eve. Say, doesn't say Adam and Eve were the first man and woman that were made by God. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that Adam and Eve were the first man and woman made in the image and likeness of God. Say, and there was a civilization on the earth before Adam and Eve, which we know from uh, Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 19 uh, onward, uh, which the prophet Jeremiah was given permission to see. Okay? And he uses the same language as Genesis 1-2. Genesis 1-1 says that God created the heavens and the earth, and Genesis 1-2 says that the earth was without form and void. Now the word uh, was in the Hebrew means the earth became without form and void. It became. So there was a big disaster between the creation, Genesis 1-1, and Genesis 1-2. In Jeremiah 4, the prophet said, I saw the earth and it was without form and void. He uses the same language. He says, and uh, I'm paraphrasing, he says that he goes on and he says, and all of the earth shook to and fro and all of the mountains quaked to and fro. And he says, and I looked and there was no man. He says, and all of the great cities were torn down. Well, why did he say I looked and there was no man? Because he saw cities. This is before Adam and Eve. See, many people say, no, no, this is prophetic literature of things to come. No, in the future, the world or the earth will not be destroyed and torn down. It will be renewed. So this is not prophetic. This refers to the past. See, so we have a situation where Satan landed on the earth and he corrupted a whole civilization. They all lost their salvation. Their disembodied souls were taken captive by Satan and they became the demons. Okay? So on the earth, we have to contend with the system. We have to contend with Satan. We have to contend with fallen angels. And we have to contend with demons. Okay? Now that's a pretty big task, isn't it? <laughs> okay? But guess what? God gives you the answers and God gives you the power to overcome. Okay? So all of that is now on the earth because Satan fell to the earth. And go down to verse 12. And it says, Revelation 12, 12, Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The word woe is an old English word, which means trouble. We don't use that word anymore. Okay? But it means trouble. Trouble to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. So here the scripture says that because he fell to the earth, he brought trouble with him. Which means what? We're on the earth, so we are now in a position where we have to deal with the troublemaker. Hmm? Okay? Or a bunch of troublemakers. Okay? Now, what is he going to do? Well, we just said, the, this is a puppet show of sight and sound. Satan is going to promise you the world. As long as he is here, he's going to want you to uh, embrace the world and the world system. Okay? So he's going to work hard at getting you to embrace all that goes on in the world and to become a part of that. See? So his purpose, while he is here, is to deceive you into embracing the world system, into going 
uh, after the things of the world. To gain the whole world. Now he's got a purpose in that. Okay? And here's the purpose. And it's in Matthew 16, 26, where Jesus said, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So the point is this. Satan is going to try to get you to go after the world and all the promises of the system. Okay, but if you do and you buy into that, you will lose your soul. Say, okay, and we'll, I'll show you why uh, shortly. Okay, but you will come to lose your soul. Why? Because it isn't the world where things are at, it's the kingdom where things are at. Huh? Okay? Remember what we said, the world operates through the spirit of error. Huh? Okay? But the kingdom of God operates by the spirit of truth. So while we are on this earth, we need not be chasing after the spirit of error in the world. We need to be chasing after the kingdom and the spirit of truth. Say, because that's where it's at. Huh? Okay? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Okay? Now, thy rod... <coughs> And thy staff. The staff uh, is what the prophets of old carried around with them. Okay? And the staff was uh, a symbol of uh, divine ministry. The rod was the symbol of authority and power. Say. The rod. The Old Testament talks about the rod of God. Huh? Okay? And it's a symbol of God's power and authority. Okay? And the staff is a symbol of his kingly prophetic ministry. All right? It says, they comfort me. In other words, you're not going through the world by yourself. You've got Jesus walking through the valley of the shadow of death with you. He doesn't ask you to do it alone, okay? But what he does ask you to do, okay, is to realize that you cannot do it without him. You must do it with him. And like we said in our last session, if he has to dislocate your hip like he dislocated Jacob's hip, he'll have to do it. And he had to do it when he wrestled with Jacob. Why? So Jacob would lean on him. So Jacob would depend on him. So that Jacob could realize that he could not stand up without him. See? That's why when God wrestled with Jacob through the night, he couldn't get Jacob to calm down. Right? Jacob wanted to control everything that was going on. So God had to dislocate his hip to get him to lean on him. To get him to depend on him to get Jesus to hold him up. See, he was wrestling with Jesus. The pre-incarnate Jesus in the Old Testament. It's Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Huh? Okay? And so God may have to do that with you or me, God forbid, right? But what we want to do is to lean on him, on his staff, lean on him, on his, on his godly authority, and he will go through this world with us, and he will be... Uh, at our side through every step we take so that the deception of the world will not deceive us. And the deceiver in this world will not deceive us. Huh? Okay? And so... Uh, So we have to be on guard, and we have to not only be on guard against the system, but we have to be on guard against the people of the world. Okay? Now watch this. 
Go to uh, Luke 16, 8. Okay? This is the condition of the world that we're contending with. In Luke 16, 8 we read, And the Lord commended the unjust steward, because he had done wisely, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. See? The children of this world are wiser than the children of light. Now notice here, the scripture is telling you that the world is occupied by two types of people. The children of light and the children of uh, Satan, the children of darkness. Okay? And it says that the children of the world or the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light. And it's really true. I mean, have you ever looked on TV and the fitness programs and this and that? And they take care of their bodies and they exercise, uh, okay, and they rest properly and they eat properly. And it's no effort at all for them to do that, okay? But just look at Christian television when the cameras pan across the audience, okay? And look at the shapes and sizes of some of us Christians, okay? And you'll see that the world does better than we do. See? You see? I'll spare you that. <laughs> Talking about our congregation. <laughs> okay? So one of the characteristics is that if the children of light, or if the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light, that means that when you're walking in this world, you don't only have to contend with the system, you've got to contend with the people. <clears throat> okay? And if you are a Christian, the scripture says they are not on your side. Okay? They are not on your side. You better watch that. Okay? As a matter of fact, as we're going to read in the scripture, the scripture says that we look peculiar to them. Okay? Now, let's look a little more at what the conditions of the world are. John 15, 18. Notice what Jesus says here. Onward. Listen to this. This is important. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Have you ever wondered why people come against you in the workplace? Huh? Why people don't like you? The reason is because they don't like Jesus first. Jesus says they hated me without a cause. See that? They don't even know why they don't hate Jesus. Or, or they don't even know why they hate Jesus, I should say. Okay? The reason is because of the spirit that's on them. Say, that's the reason. Okay? And at the same time, we learn that because of the Spirit on them hating Jesus, they hate us. Say, and that's why it says that in this earth we will have tribulation. Okay? Trouble. Because of the fact that there is a spiritual war going on for the soil, a spiritual war going on for the turf, all right? The scripture says you are in heir of the world, okay? Satan is possessing it. The world hates you because of the fact that you have your name written in Jesus' last will and testament, which is Ephesians chapter 1, by the way, okay? All right? <clears throat> So there's a reason for it. Okay? Look at verse 19 in John 15. It says, If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Can you see that? Okay? Now go to 1 Corinthians 19. <coughs> I'm sorry, 1, 1 Corinthians 3.19, I should say. 1 Corinthians 3. 
verse 19, and it says, For the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Okay? He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. So God says, this world operates by human wisdom. But human wisdom is earthly, demonic, James says. Huh? Earthly, fleshly, carnal, demonic wisdom. Okay? And God here calls it foolish wisdom. So God has no use whatsoever for the wisdom of the world. Okay? Many of you sit hours and hours watching news and news shows at night. That is the wisdom of the world. Okay? Turn it off. It's polluting your mind. Okay? Turn it off. It's polluting your mind. Okay? It's garbage. Galatians 4.3 There's a profound little verse. A lot of people don't understand this verse. But it has profound implications. Okay? Galatians 4.3 Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Now that word elements is most appropriately translated in the Revised Standard Version as elemental spirits. Correctly translated as elemental spirits. Okay? Do you all know what the elemental spirits are? They're the nature spirits. All nature spirits. Okay? Wind, the spirits of wind, water, fire, uh, air. I'm sorry, earth. Earth. Okay? And also includes all of those cute little things that you learned in childhood. The fairies. Okay? The elves, the leprechauns. Uh, the forest spirits, huh? The trolls. Uh, what else? Help me, someone. Dwarfs. Dwarfs. The, the forest dwarfs. Yeah. You ever hear seven uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? They represent our animal spirits. Is what they represent, huh? Leprechauns and fairies and uh, all of those types of things which are known in all cultures of the world, and all cultures of the world report them, okay? But what people don't understand is that those spirits, those cute little things, okay, like Tinkerbell, <laughs> okay, and what else, Peter Pan, okay, all of that stuff, okay, those are the elemental spirits, and a lot of people don't even know that, okay? But gnomes, huh? You've heard about gnomes, right? And all of those things, they're known in all cultures, okay? Some people, in Ireland, they refer to the little people, okay? They call them the little people in the forest, and most of the Irish see them when they drink. <laughs> <laughs> What they don't understand is there's a reason for that. <laughs> okay? But what is the point? The point is that that stuff is real, folks. Okay? And to, or in order to see those things, you have to operate in the gift of discernment of spirits of 1 Corinthians 12. Okay? But notice what the verse says here. It says, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage other, under the elemental spirits of the world. And when these things are uh, expose themselves, who do they expose themselves to? Children. Children. 
See? It's children who are interested in Peter Pan. It's children who are interested in fairies and goblins and leprechauns and trolls and gnomes uh, and things like that. It's children. See, the elemental spirits will always contact children first. Okay? And some of the children will regard them as imaginary friends. See? Imaginary friends. And it's very common for children to have imaginary friends. You see? Now, why does, why does it say here, why does Paul by the Holy Spirit here say that uh, when we were children we came under bondage to the elements uh, or the elemental spirits of the world? What he is saying is that there is a part of the kingdom of darkness that works through the elementals or the elemental spirits of the world, okay, to get us into bondage to the world or the world system early on in life. They target the children, see? They fascinate the kids. And you can even see it today with all of the Disney cartoons that have to do with witchcraft and sorcery. Huh? There's movies by, kid, by, by Disney called The Sorcerer's Apprentice. There's another one by Disney called Fantasia, which is filled with forest nymphs and fairies and all sorts of elemental spirits. <coughs> Okay, there are other Disney cartoons where Mickey Mouse is dressed up as a sorcerer with a peaked, uh, pointed cap and a uh, magic wand. What is the purpose of all of that? See, behind the scenes in the spirit realm, in the spirit world, there are elemental spirits who are driving the people who write these things, driving the people who produce these things. Why? to capture the attention of the kids early on and to feed that stuff steadily to them so that they get desensitized to Satan and desensitized to witchcraft. You see? In other words, it's a deception and it's a lie because the world operates through the lie. See? The world operates through the, 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 the deception and Satan's position is that if he can have the children early on in their life, then he can control them forever. Say, if he can win them over early in life, then he can control them. Say, so there's a spiritual war going on here. And Paul says that it begins early in life and the world system has elementals which try to woo the children into the world standard. Woo the children into uh, the uh, world system, okay? And we see it continues through uh, childhood. It continues through teenage life, okay? And how do we know that? Because we see it on television, huh? The kids are caught up in rap. They're caught up in this type of music or that type of music. And they're so bound up to the elementals, okay, uh, that they'll even carry around these radios with earphones, okay, letting the words of those songs minister to them continually. You see, it's destructive. It's destructive. So we must understand the conditions of the world before we respond to them. Now, in Ephesians 2, Verse 2 we read, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and has raised us up together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ, 
For by grace you are saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, what is this saying? It's saying that even though you are in the world, you are called by grace through faith, and in the Spirit you are seated in heavenly places. Say, you are seated in heavenly places. Well, you can say, but Bern, I don't understand that. I don't feel like I'm seated in heavenly places. Well, that's okay. You don't have to feel anything. You don't have to experience anything. All you have to do is trust that it's true because God says it's true. So take it by faith. You're seated in heavenly places. See? It also says in the scripture that you were saved from the before the foundation of the world. Do you understand that? It's pretty hard to understand that, isn't it? That you were saved from before the foundation of the world. Well, the foundation of the world, according to what science tells us, is over 5 billion years ago. You were saved, and Jesus was calling you by name over 5 billion years ago. Do you understand that? I don't understand that. It blows my mind to think about it. You see? But I can accept it by faith. I can accept it as truth because God doesn't lie. And someday I'll understand the fullness of it. And so will you. You see? And so that's the way we have to handle some of these things. We have to accept them as so because God says they're so. God puts us in a position where we have to take things by trust, by faith. Huh? Okay? And so if we go on in Ephesians, look at chapter 6, 12. Because here is the problem that we are faced with in the world. It says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. <clears throat> now, what, what the Holy Spirit is saying here is you're on the earth, but there are four categories of demons that you have to contend with. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, wicked spirits in high places. See? Principalities and power spirits are spirits over continents, nations, states, cities, provinces, communities. Okay? Power spirits are the spirits that carry out the commands of the principalities. Okay? Then there are rulers of the darkness, ruler spirits above them that control whole groups of demons under them, and there are wicked spirits in high places. These are the spirits below Satan, okay, who, give, who uh, are the ones that give the orders. They are the spirits who are the commanding generals, if you would, see? And being the commanding generals, they give the orders to the other spirits, and then above them is the strong man who is Satan. Okay, so notice you've got the strong man, you've got uh, the wicked spirits, then you've got the rulers, then you've got the principalities, then you've got the power. See, there's a hierarchy of spirits, okay? And they are on this earth to control this earth, and if you let them to control you, see? And they are hell-bent, if you'll excuse the pun, they are hell-bent on controlling you. See? But there is a remedy for that. Okay? And here in Ephesians 6, the Holy Spirit tells us in verse 13 on, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. All right? And then it tells you what the armor is. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. 
and the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now, how are you going to walk in the world? You're going to put on the full armor of God. And that's a prayer, a daily prayer. Lord, I put on the helmet of salvation, for you are my salvation. I put on the breastplate of righteousness, for you are my righteousness. I put on the belt of truth, for you are my truth. I stand and shod my feet with the gospel, uh, with the shoes of the gospel of peace on which to stand, for you are my peace. In my left hand I pick up the shield of faith with which to quench every fiery dart of the enemy. Not some of them, every one of them. See, faith is a shield. Satan can't get past your faith. Did you know that? Faith is a shield. He can tell you he's going to do this and that to you and all sorts of things. And if you say, no, you're not by faith in Jesus' name. No, you're not by faith in Jesus' name. No, you're not by faith in Jesus' name. Nothing will happen because he can't get past your shield of faith. See? With which to quench every fiery dart of the enemy. Every attack of the enemy. Okay? Is quenched or died out by your, feet, your shield of faith. Your faith on Jesus. And in my right hand, I pick up the sword of the Spirit, which is your word. Huh? Okay. So you've got faith in the left hand, the sword in the right hand, and you've got the belt of truth. Now hold on a minute. The belt of truth. What is the truth of God? The word of God. So the belt of truth is the logos word of God. Okay. Now the... The sword of the Spirit hangs on the belt of truth. The sword of the Spirit hangs on the Logos Word of God. But the sword of the Spirit, it says there, which is the Word of God, is a different Word of God than the belt of truth. The belt of truth is the Logos Word of God, and the sword of the Spirit is the Rhema Word of God. And the Rhema Word of God rests on or hangs on the Logos Word of God. Do you get that? You see? So you can quote against the enemy while you're walking on this earth both the Logos Word of God and you can give the enemy the Rhema Word of God which is your faith-filled words that come out of your mouth prompted by the Holy Spirit and they will defeat the enemy and paralyze the enemy and stop the enemy dead in his tracks. See? So in other words, what is he saying here? Here the Holy Spirit this morning is showing us all the conditions by which the world operates and now he's showing you the remedy of how to walk through the furnace and not get burned. See? It's by using the armor of God. Okay? If you've, if you've got the armor of God on and you're in the fiery furnace, things may get hot, but they won't burn you. You may sweat a little, but it won't burn you. See? Okay? So God has a remedy for these things, and if we know how to operate in these things, and we understand the armor of God, and what the armor of God is, then uh, you will be able to get the victory 100% of the time. See? The last verse I want to share with you today is Colossians 2.8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Now that word rudiments is the same word as elements or elemental spirits. Elements or elemental spirits. See? So in other words, the elemental spirits not only try to influence us when we are little children, they start work right away. But even as we get to be adults, it says that they work on us through vain philosophies. Okay? Let no one spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. 
So what they're going to try to do is you get when you get older is minister to your thought life to get you bound up in traditions. Okay? Cultural traditions. Okay? Cultural traditions. Uh, religious traditions of men. See? And some of those traditions can become so important to you that if you hold on to those, you've got an idol. And you need to get rid of your idol. You're in idolatry, see? Okay? And we have a city here that is just full of cultural uh, bondage and cultural traditions. Okay? Where their country is, is as important to them as their God. See? Or their culture is as important to them as their God. Their identity is with a nation. Their identity is uh, with a culture. Okay? If you are a true born again Christian, your country is heaven and your language is tongues. Say, you are not an American, you are not a Cuban, you are not a Haitian. Okay? You're a member, a citizen of the kingdom in heaven. You see? And your country is heaven and your language is tongues. You see? And nothing but. And if anything other than that is important to you, you've got an idol. And you need to get rid of your idol. Because it takes a different way of thinking to be a Christian. It takes a different way of thinking to be a Christian. It takes a different way of thinking to be a Christian. See? Now these elemental spirits, when we get older, they will work to draw us into those traditions of men. How did you get to that point where your nation got to be important to you? The elemental spirits ministered that to you. That's how. See? How did you get to that point where your religion or your denomination became so important to you. The elemental spirits ministered that to you, and you ate the cake. See? You bought it. And that happens to all of us. And the Bible calls that traditions of men. And the world system operates in traditions of men. Say, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I'm not, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. That's right. Okay? Because we are going to be wiser, are we not? We're going to be wiser than what the world system wants us to be. Okay? There may be afflictions which they throw at us, but we have a shield of faith. We have an armor of God. We have a sword of the Spirit to counteract. We have the ability to stand and resist. We have the ability to lean on our God, our Christ, who walks side by side with us through this world system to show us, to expose what they are and what they're doing. What they are and what they're doing. And why? Because the scripture says the world is under judgment. You see? And there is a time coming in the very near future where the world has an appointment with Christ. There is a day and there is an hour and there is a second and there is a moment where the world will bow its knee to Christ and where Christ will have something to say to the world and it isn't going to be nice. Okay? Because there is a toll which Christ will extract from the world for its wicked way. <coughs> okay? But it is the only way that God can renew the world and bring forth the new world spoken of in the book of Revelation. You see? And so we are not going to be a part of that. And in the furnace of affliction which the world contributes to, we are going to be discerning. We are going to have discerning eyes. We are going to have discerning ears. 
we are going to evaluate what we see and what we hear. The puppet show of sight and sound. That is the devil's masquerade. We are going to unmask. And we are going to say, no, that is of the devil. This is of God. That is of deceit. This is uh, of the spirit. This is error. This is truth. And we are going to walk like that through the world. And as we walk like that through the world, we are going to get the, the victory. And we are going to walk out of the furnace of affliction that the world tries to put on us. And we are not only going to have the victory, we are going to have the possession because the scripture says we are the heirs. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's stop there for today and we'll continue in our next session. Father, we give you all the glory for the truth of your word that you have brought forth, that you show us how to handle the world, that you show us how to walk through the world, that you show us how to get the victory, that you show us what is of you and what is not of you, that we lean on you and that through you we have the victory 100% of the time. We give you thanks, we give you praise, and we give you all the glory. And the saints said in agreement, Amen. Amen. Amen.